Hello, Wolfpack. Uh, you know I'm here. I'm talking about Litecoin uh, right now, LTC. And the reason I'm talking about Litecoin is because, well, I mean, I've just discovered um, a absolutely brilliant fractal that I haven't talked about before. Um, and I'm not really sure why I haven't talked about it before because I have known about it for a while here. But I just thought about it the other day and I watched one of my old Litecoin videos I did three weeks ago and I didn't really bring it up. And I think that it's time to bring it up, time to bring it to your attention for sure uh, because Litecoin is a coin that I'm expecting to top out with Bitcoin. And the reason why that's useful and the reason why you guys can work that into your portfolio uh, is that, and as I've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks, if you haven't got in now, uh, it might be a little bit too late, right? It's already moved up 25% in the last day or two. So, you know, the longer you wait, the more risk you're going to be taking on uh, in terms of uh, returns. You could get better in other coins. But the point of the matter is, is that, you know, it's still fine and that, um, you know, it's going to be topping out with Bitcoin. As I said, uh, the reason why this is beneficial to use, you can trade Litecoin, right? Wait for the Bitcoin top, sell when Bitcoin tops, and then filter that money you gained, those profits you made from Litecoin into some altcoins that haven't moved yet. Because there's two types of altcoins in the market. There's the altcoins that move with Bitcoin and there's the altcoins that move after Bitcoin moves, right? So what you can do is you can trade the altcoins that move with Bitcoin now, wait for Bitcoin to top out, sell all of those, and then put all that profit back into altcoins that are still on the ground. Hence, you're getting like a free cycle of profits, right? If you understand what I'm saying. Um, and that's that's why I'm trading Litecoin, right? That's why I like it. I don't necessarily care about the fundamentals too much. It doesn't really mean much to me. Yes, they have, you know, right next to Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum and Bitcoin uh, in uh, a lot of, um, you know, adoptional uh, things that are happening, for example, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, for example, PayPal, for example, every single website that's adopting cryptocurrencies payment, right? Uh, you know, they're being adopted on a mass scale. Uh, so obviously it's good, uh, good enough to be adopted, uh, but that's not what I'm trading, right? I'm trading it for the profits because um, I'm not planning to hold it for a long period of time. Uh, and the reason why I'm trading it right now is because, well, I've, I've identified this fractal. And before we get into the fractal, which is the main part of this video, let's just look a quick overview of the weekly, of the daily chart, sorry. Then we can get into the fractal on the weekly chart, which is the main part of this video. So the daily chart, as we expected, we, what did we say would happen, right? We said, uh, we made this video three weeks ago and we said that, so we must have made it somewhere back here somewhere, right? We said that we would see uh, probably, you know, some uh, kind of inverse head and shoulders pattern. We saw kind of an inverse head and shoulders pattern play out. It got rejected though as Bitcoin dropped down. We saw extensive consolidation. We said we break to the upside in mid-November. It's currently mid-November and we've broken to the upside. So everything we expected to happen happened, right? We referenced in the last video that we had this compression on the building bands and we've moved from that. We referenced that we had this uh, SMA squeeze and we've moved from that as well. And we've had you know a considerable amount of support as well, which is great to see. Uh, as for the VVPR, we flipped the POC and this is what we mentioned in the last in the last video as well. We recently flipped the POC in the last video. We also came back down, retested it once again, and now we moved to the upside. So the POC on the volume profile is an area in which there is a massive amount of historical trading attention in that region. So if you're above it, it acts as support. If you're below it, it acts as resistance, right? And active support, which is great to see. Um, what we also saw was some sort of, well, we saw an RSI resistance line here and we actually flipped that. I could draw this better with a line, but the point of the matter is, is we flipped it, retested it and headed to the upside, which is very bullish as well. And we finally saw in the last couple of days, a bullish MACD cross and we've actually blasted out to the upside above our neckline. So... This is technically still uh, an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And the reason being is because, well, it looks like an inverse head and shoulders pattern, right? And we can take a targeted move from the bottom of this head to the neckline, which is around here, we'll say. And then we can extrapolate that data to the breakout point, which should be around uh, here somewhere. We can see that the target for this move is around 315 USD. Uh, whether we will move there without consolidating, without correcting, that's another question, but the point of the matter is, is we've already moved up 25% in 24 hours. So, um, you know, we're going pretty well so far. It's clearly a breakout. And, you know, this is more evidence right now, uh, you know, other than the last two cycles of evidence we've had, but this is more evidence that it moves with Bitcoin because you will notice that uh, as soon as Bitcoin took off yesterday, uh, Litecoin took off right with it, while a lot of altcoins actually waited a few hours and lagged behind for a little bit. Litecoin quite clearly moves with Bitcoin. Um, so what we can see on Litecoin, and this is the main part of the video here, is a very, very, very clear fractal, right, from the last cycle, and this is just amazing to see, right, because this shows us that, hey, the exactly the same thing is happening from the last cycle as it is happening now, therefore, we can get a really, really precise price prediction of what's actually going to happen towards the end of the cycle, so this will, uh, in some ways, adjust my price prediction on Litecoin, however, um, 
you know, my, my previous price prediction was actually pretty accurate to this fractal regardless. So let's get into the fractal. What we can see is in the last cycle, a downtrend on the, on the RSI, right? Downtrend on the RSI. We saw uh, following that, um, sorry, we had a downtrend. I'd circled the wrong thing. We had a downtrend on the RSI. We saw a little W formation and then a spike to the upside. We've had a downtrend on the RSI, a little W formation, and we're going to be spiking to the upside, right? All of the dates line up perfectly right? We topped out here, right? We topped out here. Everything lines up perfectly. Um, we had a bottom and we're moving in November, right? We're moving in November. We topped out here in late August. We topped out here in late August here. Um, and, you know, I guess you could say that this May top didn't necessarily match up because we're a bit lower in May here for Litecoin. However, you know, we have uh, three separate dates in which the dates are the same. Another thing that's similar is that we also retested the bull market support band right before we moved upwards. What have we done recently in the last couple of weeks? We've been retesting that bull market support band after that W formation, right? So we also had a W formation here before we meant, went to to the upside, we've had a larger W formation here before entering the upside. So it's not absolutely identical, but it's pretty clear that the structure is the same, especially when looking at the RSI. Um, what we can kind of gather in terms of price prediction, what we can look at uh, is actually taking away uh, the bull market support band. And what we can do is we can take a measurement from the high we made in August, right, to the peak in 2017, which is 330% right? And then what we can do is we can measure 330% from the high we made in August, right? The start of September, late August, 330% to the upside. And it brings us to a price point of around, right? 1,000, right? If we adjust that for diminished returns, let's take off 10%, bring it down to 300. That's 800, 937 USD, Right, that's our target for Litecoin, 937 USD, using the same prediction model as to what happened the last cycle. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is because, well, as you just saw, there's a lot of similarities. We've taken off 10% for diminishing returns because diminishing returns happen as an asset class gets higher and higher. Uh, the reason we only took off 10%, whereas Bitcoin, we took off 50%, is because Litecoin's actually not much higher now as it was in the last couple of cycles. So, you know, we took off 10% there. 937. Um, our previous price prediction for Litecoin uh, was an extrapolation of data, 130% uh, upwards from the current uh, all-time high in Litecoin, which brings us to 951. And how we came to that was because, well, Litecoin reached a price point of around 420 USD, while Bitcoin reached 64K, assuming Bitcoin goes to our price target of around 113K by January the 6th. Uh, extrapolating that data to Litecoin and adding 50% returns because altcoins outperform Bitcoin by around 50% typically in that uh, market capitalization range. That brings us to a price point of around 955. So now we have a very clear price target for Litecoin between 937 and 955, right? So we've really narrowed that down. And this is one of the reasons why I like Litecoin. Yes, there's not going to be exponential returns, right? It's only about a 4X, less than a 4X, but we have so much evidence for this. This coin has been around for much longer than other coins. It's more of a sure bet, right? We know when it's going to top out exactly. It's topped out with Bitcoins in the last two cycles. So as soon as we start seeing the Bitcoin top, we can see the Litecoin top. Another thing we can do, is look at the RSI and predict the top by the RSI. We can see that in the last cycle, uh, let me check this real quick. We saw um, the RSI reached 98 here. Uh, it reached 98 here at the peak. It reached 87 here at the peak, and it came all the way back up to around uh, 92, so minus six. And we can say that, you know, just off the top of my head here, uh, I'm going to say around, it should be around 84. Two, something like that. So when the RSI reaches around 82 uh, in this cycle as well, that will probably be uh, some sort of top signal as well. And that's expected to happen uh, when Bitcoin tops out in early January. So we're looking at 82 on the RSI, and we're also looking at uh, 937 to 955 on the price chart. So I hope that made sense. Uh, I think it's pretty convincing. Let's look at the Bitcoin pair quite quickly as well, just to end off the video. Uh, on the Bitcoin pair, what we can see is a pretty clear uh, bullish divergence on the RSI, right? Uh, price is headed down and the RSI is headed up. So that's good to see. We've also got a bullish MACD cross incoming uh, within the next week, which is great to see. And that's another spike to the upside there. And that's probably driven by the fact that uh, Litecoin has been moving pretty well. Uh, we've also, as predicted, 
bounced off the all-time low, right? We had the all-time low here and here, and we said we're going to bounce off this, and we have seen a little bounce off of that right now. We said on Litecoin that we won't be reaching all-time highs in the Bitcoin pair because the all-time high was made in 2013, right? As you can see, in 2017, we had a massive bull market, and we didn't even reach anywhere near that. So I'm actually only expecting to reach somewhere around uh, 10, well, 11,000 sats here uh, on the Bitcoin pair, right? Because think about it. 2013, we went absolutely parabolic. 2017, we went absolutely parabolic. We didn't even get near it. So this cycle, there's no real reason why we'll get near that, right? So 11,000 sats, 8,000 to 11,000 sats, I'm thinking anywhere in that region. But ultimately, I'm expecting a pretty sharp move on the Bitcoin pair in the next couple of months before Bitcoin tops out. So Litecoin looks good. Yes, you know, as of right now, and you know, I have been, I've been telling you, to, you know, I'm not going to say I've been telling you to get into this coin, but I've been I've been sharing my views on this coin for months now, uh, even when it was down here at the very bottom, right, at around 100 USD, 110 USD. Um, so I can't really uh, feel too bad for you if you haven't really got into this one yet. But the point of the matter is, is that if you're in it, or it maybe even if you want to get in it now, you know, it looks good. Um, it's not going to give you a 20x, right? This is a coin that uh, is quite conservative. It's been around since 2013. We have a lot of data for it, and hence we can make quite precise price predictions, unlike most altcoins. And that's why I like it, right? Because I can be sure it's one of these more conservative coins in my portfolio that I think every portfolio can have. It's some decent large cap exposure. Um, and it's one of those coins that you can easily predict when it's going to top out, cut those profits, and sink them back into another altcoin that is still on the ground. So I like Litecoin a lot. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.